GPT-5 just launched a couple of weeks ago, and right before that, they launched Agent Mode, which basically lets AI work alone on multi-step tasks while you walk away. I've been testing it out with the brand new GPT-5 model to see what it can really do. Today, I'm sharing four practical use cases for Agent Mode, from content creation research to getting it to create mood boards of top-selling designs that can save you hours of manual work. Plus, I'll give you my honest thoughts on what worked well and what didn't. So let's jump right in. For those of you who haven't tried it yet, here's how it works. It combines autonomous web navigation with ChatGPT's other capabilities like deep research, generating images, and integrating with tools using connectors for apps like Gmail. Before we dive in, just a quick heads up that Agent Mode requires a ChatGPT Plus subscription at $20 a month, and you get 40 agent tasks per month with that plan. Now let's start with something that every content creator struggles with, what to create next. So let's see how Agent Mode handles this challenge. All right, so we're gonna head over to the main ChatGPT screen right here. And over here, you're gonna see all the different new models. So you have Auto, which decides how long to think for us. Then you have Fast, which gives you quicker answers. And then there's the Thinking model. So I'm gonna leave it on Auto for now for the GPT-5 model. Now to access Agent Mode, what you're gonna do is in the prompt box, click on the plus sign and select Agent Mode. Now you can see that it gives you ideas here on what you could prompt the Agent Mode to do. But we're gonna be using a custom prompt. Now let's say we have a YouTube channel about storytelling and we wanna make a video about storytelling in business. I'm gonna give it this detailed prompt for multi-platform trend research. So we've got the role here, we've got trend minor for my YouTube channel about storytelling in business and content creation. Perfect, we've got the context, what I'm doing, I help small business owners, solopreneurs, creators, individuals use storytelling to sell, inspire and connect. The objective, what it needs to do, it needs to scan Reddit, Substack, YouTube, Google Trends, find early storytelling trends. And then we have phase one here where we're talking about the different platforms we wanted to look at and we have the exact task of what we wanted to pull and do. And then we have phase two, which is pattern recognition. So what is appearing on two or more platforms? And then we have phase three, so the trend forecasting. So we wanted to deliver five to 10 emerging opportunities, a winning topic, unique angle, and three to five supporting keywords. Okay, so let's run it and see what it can do. All right, so it immediately starts systematically scanning Reddit for storytelling related threads. And by the way, at any point while it's running, you can actually completely stop it or you can actually take over the browser by hitting the three dots over here on the right and clicking take over browser. But here's where things get interesting. Substack blocked access. But then watch how it actually tries to adapt though. Instead of stopping, it actually pivots to other blog sources. Now it moves to YouTube, but it hits another roadblock says this video isn't available anymore. But again, it's trying to find alternative sources. So it worked for 16 minutes and here's what it delivered initially. So these are actually pretty solid insights. And then we get to the emerging opportunities for our channel. These are genuinely useful content ideas, but if you notice, the sources don't include any YouTube data. That's a huge piece missing for a YouTube strategy. So the agent tried to get YouTube information, but again, it was blocked and got an error message. So then I ask a follow-up question. Can we try to look at the YouTube data again per the original prompt while still being in agent mode? And this time it worked for one minute pulling information from YouTube and gives me four videos. Now, three out of the four of these videos were decent picks, but the first one had zero views. So you definitely need to double check these results. Now, after asking it to integrate those YouTube insights into the original output that it gave me when it first generated the agent mode response, I now have a more complete picture than before. So now it's giving me the revised pattern recognition section, the updated emerging opportunities table, and the revised recommended video that it thinks I should produce for the channel. Now this saved us significant research time, but you can clearly see that this is not perfect. It can be a powerful time saver, but always verify what it gives you. Now using agent mode is a really great way to start experimenting with AI agents in a relatively straightforward way. But if you're wanting to dive deeper into AI agents and actually implement them across your entire business strategy, then I recommend that you take a look at this free AI agents playbook from HubSpot. I'll link it in the description box below. This guide shows you how to build complete AI agent workflows across marketing, sales, and operations not just for content research, but for lead generation, customer service, process automation, and so much more. Inside, you'll get the exact frameworks for identifying which tasks to automate first, step-by-step -step implementation roadmaps, and real insights from HubSpot's own implementation experience. 
Plus, they break down how to avoid the common roadblocks that slow down AI adoption. My favorite section is actually the future of work section. It breaks down how AI agents will change hiring and skills. And honestly, it's really eye-opening. Download it for free using the link in the description and thanks to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Next, we're gonna test something with immediate profit potential. Let's say you have a website, but you're not getting the conversion to sales that you're expecting. Instead of spending time doing a manual audit, let's see if agent mode can analyze the website for us and give us actionable feedback. To show you how this works, I'm giving it this detailed prompt to analyze this Shopify store. For each product on the homepage and collection pages, capture the thumbnail image with and visible text, evaluate for visual clarity, call to action strength, image product match, does the image clearly show the product being sold, cross check against e-commerce best practices and suggest fixes to increase click-through rates. Notice I'm asking for specific analysis criteria and structured output format. You can see at the bottom, I'm giving it almost like a table, product name, issue, impact on click-through rates and suggested fix. So it's very clear what I'm looking for. So this makes sure I get actionable insights and not vague suggestions. All right, let's see what it does. So first it's researching e-commerce best practices to understand how product images and layouts should look. This is actually pretty smart. It's educating itself before it's making recommendations. Next, it's actually analyzing call to action examples to understand what drives conversions. I like how methodically it's approaching this. It's not just looking at this site in isolation. Now it's analyzing the actual website. It's examining all the product images, the layout, the call to action, and the user experience. It's essentially doing a comprehensive conversion audit automatically. You can see it's identifying patterns and inconsistencies across product pages. This systematic analysis would take hours to do manually. Okay, so here's what it delivered after nine minutes. We've got observations and recommendations, specific observations about the thumbnail consistency of the images, having more consistent product photos, making products the focal point, adding benefit phrases to convey value quickly. But here's the gold, look at this detailed table. We've got the product name, specific issue, the impact that it actually has on the click-through rate and the exact suggested fixes. So this tells us exactly which items need our attention and how to fix them. These are changes that could be implemented today and might directly impact sales. No guesswork, no lengthy manual audits, just specific actionable improvements based on e-commerce best practices. Now, what if you wanna launch a product, but you have no idea what people actually want? Well, this next use case is super helpful for that. Instead of guessing what to build, let me show you how AI finds market gaps by analyzing what customers actually complain about. Let's say we wanna sell one of those under desk walking pad treadmills online, but we wanna gather some market intel on existing products first. I'm gonna give it this prompt. I wanna sell an under desk walking pad treadmill online, First, search Amazon for similar products in this category. If Amazon reviews aren't accessible, search other e-commerce websites, extract common complaints and group them into themes like noise, stability, speed range, portability, durability, customer service. For each theme, create a feature that addresses that pain point, output this as a table and create a pie chart of complaint themes by frequency so we can visually see what are the most common complaints. Notice that I give it an out in case Amazon doesn't actually work and knows to look at other websites for information too. I find that this kind of fallback plan gives you better results with agent mode. All right, so let's run it and see what we get. So the first thing it tries to do is search Amazon, but it doesn't work and we're getting a 503 message because Amazon is blocking bots. Now Walmart is also blocked as well. So it's trying to find alternative sites to get reviews. So you can see it's going to blog sites, Trustpilot, Best Buy, Good Gear, et cetera, and it's reading through tons of competitor reviews and categorizing the complaints into themes automatically. And again, this type of research would take me hours to do manually. And watch how it's systematically organizing all the unstructured review data into meaningful categories. It's analyzing patterns and extracting insights from real customer feedback. And after working through multiple sources and reading through dozens of reviews, it's now compiling everything into the structured format that I requested. And when it's done running, here's the actual output we get. A really nice table with the complaint theme, an example review quote, including where it actually came from, and the recommended feature or improvement for our new product. Some people complain about the durability, the noise, weight capacity, safety, belt size, etc. But what takes this up a notch is this pie chart right here, which gives us complaint themes by frequency. So how many complaints there are for each category, which is awesome, very useful. 
You can see the belt size, the stability, the durability, the portability and storage are some of the more common concerns. You can see how this would be really valuable for coming up with a new product idea and validating pain points that already exist and what opportunities exist to solve a real problem. Every complaint is a potential product improvement opportunity. This next one is probably my favorite because it creates something you can actually see. Let's say you wanna launch a clothing line, but you have no idea what designs are actually selling well. Instead of spending hours scrolling through different sites for inspiration on designs, let's see if we can use agent mode to research top selling designs for us and to create a professional mood board based on those designs. For example, let's say we wanted to create some fall sweatshirt designs. I'm giving it this detailed prompt to research winning designs. Search for fall sweatshirt or autumn sweatshirt designs on Amazon that have over 50 sales or reviews and were released within the last 12 months. Collect 30 images of winning top selling sweatshirts showing layouts, fonts, and colors. If Amazon is unavailable, use backup platforms like Etsy, Redbubble, Target, etc. Build downloadable PDF mood board. Again, I'm giving it a backup option because we know these sites often block access. I'm also being specific on what successful designs mean over 50 sales or reviews. So first it tries Etsy, but runs into access restrictions again. So this is becoming a pattern, right? But watch how it adapts and now it focuses on Etsy instead, which has more accessible listings. Now it's systematically searching across Etsy for fall and autumn sweatshirt designs that meet our criteria, over 50 sales and launched within the past 12 months. So you can see it's identifying popular designs with themes like pumpkin spice, autumn leaves, in my era phrases, bucket lists, etc. It's not just collecting random designs, it's analyzing which ones have actually had strong sales records and which ones are trending and current. I actually used to have an Etsy store and this type of research would take me hours to do. Now here's where I had to step in. Initially, after working for 12 minutes, it created this table right here with all the design information, but I wanted actual visual mockups. So instead of giving up completely on this, what I did was I actually gave it a follow-up prompt, inserted the table that it gave me of all of the different designs and said, turn this into a mood board with actual image mockups for each design listed. And for this, I just turned off the agent mode and used the regular GPT-5 model. And after giving it that follow-up prompt, here's what it actually delivered. A complete visual mood board with uniform sweatshirt mockups showing all the top selling design trends. I'm actually pretty impressed. You've got vintage fonts, minimalist line art, seasonal icons, groovy typography, like all based on what's actually selling well right now. Now it would have been better if agent mode could have done this on the first try instead of just giving us a spreadsheet with image descriptions, but we got there eventually and still saved tons of time. We were still able to gather some visual designs that are proven to sell well that we can now generate inspiration from. And as I mentioned briefly at the beginning of this video, agent mode can also work with other connectors to integrate with your Google Drive, calendar, email, and other business tools. You can set these up by going to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, clicking settings, and then connectors, and you'll see a list of different apps that you can connect to. Once connected, you can combine agent mode workflows with these integrated apps for other powerful automations. Now, before you go running off to try these out, I wanna share some potential limitations that you might come up against to save you some potential frustration. Based on my experience, Agent Mode excels at massive research projects and tedious multi-platform tasks, basically what we just did. But let me be real, they're not perfect. You watch me troubleshoot blocked websites, verify that zero view YouTube video, and ask follow-up questions when results were incomplete. They can get things wrong, take longer than expected, and sometimes stop working mid-task. And for more complex workflows, they can even lose track of what they're doing. My recommendation? I think it's great for research or analysis where you can actually verify the results. But I wouldn't trust them yet with anything that could potentially damage your business, like client emails or changes to important documents. One more thing to keep in mind is that agents can access whatever you give them access to. So if you connect your Gmail or your Google Drive or you log into a website mid-task, the agent can see that data. It's not storing everything permanently, but just be thoughtful about what you're connecting and what websites you're logging into. If you're working with really sensitive stuff, then maybe skip the connectors for that particular task. And you can always clean out your browser data in ChatGPT settings for additional security. So to clear your browser data, you're gonna go to the icon at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. Then you're gonna click on settings and then click on data controls and then remote browser data. You're gonna click on delete all. And that's how you can do that. 
But even with these limitations, what you just saw represents a fundamental shift in how we get work done. This isn't about replacing humans. It's about freeing yourself up to focus on the strategic decisions that actually grow your business. While AI handles the research, you handle the vision. I genuinely think that we're at one of those moments where the businesses that don't start experimenting with this stuff now are going to wish that they started sooner. Try this with your own business, maybe even doing a website audit like we did and see what insights you uncover. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And if you want to learn more about how you can use AI to level up your work and your life, then click this next video.